Awesome. Guys, it's so good to be with you guys. Uh, my name is Jason. I'm 25 years old. Uh, I'm from Langley, British Columbia. Anyone know where Langley is? When we travel, like, when we travel to more obscure places, uh, we say things like, I'm from Vancouver. I'm not actually from Vancouver. It just makes me feel cooler when people actually know where I'm from. I'm from Langley. It's awesome. And I live in Langley with my wife, Rachel, who's holding a chocolate chip muffin in the back there. And I always introduce Rachel. And I decide I'm never going to travel without her again because when people meet me, they're like, okay, nice, decent guy. Where's denim on denim? That's a bit weird. Must be a West Coast thing. But then they see my wife, and they're like, wow, she's good looking. And then they talk to her, she's nice, she's smart, she's intelligent. Like, he must be a re reasonably decent guy to, if, you can, if you can hang out with someone like that. So I always try to be with her. And then in the stroller beside her is our, our, our new son, Hudson William Ballard. And he is the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, if God, uh, God's smart, smart, if, if I had a girl first, I would have exploded. I just would have exploded with love. Uh, it, it, my, my heart is still like, you know, after you work out a lot, you, you, you're sore for a little while. I've, we've had this baby for eight weeks and my heart is sore because it grew two sizes when we had this baby and it's changed my entire life. And I've been working on this project called Youth Alpha for about two years now, actually about three years. But the, the project started a long time ago. When I was in high school, we started praying when I was in grade nine on Wednesday mornings at Terry Fox Secondary. We started praying every Wednesday morning in room 237, which was like a computer lab. And so we were given this space to pray and we would pray and... Um, and, and God started speaking to our hearts this desire that we would be able to do something to reach our friends. And I had a real desire on my heart to share the gospel with my friends. But I, and, and I remember I went to a conference one time and the main speaker, who's an incredible guy, and I still follow him today, talked about when he was in high school, he stood up on his cafeteria table and preached his gospel, the gospel to everybody in the room. And I was so terrified that that's what I had to do to, to share, share the gospel with my friends. And again, I love this leader, and, and, and he's incredible. I guess God told him to do that, or that was something that he felt like. But the, it, that, that confronted everything that I felt comfortable with. And we know, as followers of Jesus, it's not about being comfortable. But even for me, it, it started wrestling with this idea of, like, what do I believe about the people I'm telling about Jesus? Because I was having these experiences when, when faith conversations would come up. I had this feeling that there's, there's more to the story than just me talking. And what I discovered is that if you created spaces where people could have conversations about faith, I learned that sometimes people don't want to listen to you until they feel listened to. You know what I mean? Sometimes people need to feel heard to feel like they can listen to you talk. And, and so we started this thing in our school. We started these after-school discussion groups really wanting to share our faith with people. We used this video series called Quest. And some of you guys might be familiar with it, but it really goes through some of the basics of the Christian faith and leaves room for discussion. And so we rented the foods room, well, not rented, but you know, signed out the sheet for the foods room and the principal gave us permission and we started these clubs. And I remember the first week we had quests in our school, all of us from the prayer group invited our friends that didn't know God and said, hey, do you want to come and have conversations about faith, life, and God with us, watch a video, have some food and do this. And more than 60 people gathered that time, 50 of them, completely unchurched, gathered in this classroom to talk about faith, life, and God. And as the seven weeks went on of this this, this, this quest thing, uh, some more people came, some weeks, less other weeks, but over the whole time we discovered that this, that creating a space where people could talk about their questions, about about faith, about the, what they're going through is a really powerful way to share the gospel. We had this element where we showed a video and there was clear teaching and then we'd talk and it was brilliant. And here's what I, I realized, I worked at a church uh, for a few years, and we were right across the street from Langley Secondary School. We were literally like a stone throw, like, you know, a, a mediocre stone tosser could hit it. You know, if you're a bad stone tosser, you probably couldn't, good, good stone tosser, no problem. So it was a stone's throw away, and uh, we had our office right at the front of the church building. And so hundreds, hundreds of students would walk, high school students, the people who were hundreds, would walk across our parking lot every single day. Guess how many of them came knocking on the door of our church to ask their questions? None. Not one of them came knocking on the door and said, hey, I've just got some spiritual questions. Uh, is there anyone I can talk to? Not one person knocked on the door of the church. And so uh, that could mean two things. One, people don't care about spiritual questions. They don't have spiritual questions. Or two, they didn't feel safe to approach the church that way. Which one of those do you guys feel is true? Two. The reason why I believe that one isn't true is because we see this all the time. There's a high spiritual interest in people. People do ask life's biggest questions. What am I here for? Why do I exist? Is there more to life than this? And who do they go to to ask these questions? 
when they have like a dark night of the soul, when they have an experience where was, someone's lost in their family, or they're, they're confronted with pain, or they're, they're experiencing great winds in life, who do they go to? Their closest friends. They go to their closest friends to try to talk about these things. And so in a, in a church in England, over 15 years ago, they started this thing called the Alpha Course. And it was just one church giving a course for the basics of Christianity. They'd have a meal, give a talk, and have some discussion after, after the talk to talk about it. And it was just for this church, and it grew so much that a few other churches nearby said, hey, why don't we do the same sort of thing? And so what ended up happening is this church said, well, let's film the talks that we're doing that go through the basics of the Christian faith, and let's put them in people's hands. And so it started growing throughout the UK, and it started growing around the world. And now, today, almost 22 million people around the world have done the Alpha Course. And that, to me, is proof enough that people have questions. People are drawn to environments where they get a chance to talk freely. And so what I'm excited about is, is this journey of quest and this story of Alpha have collided through my life. Uh, uh, and a couple years ago, we started writing scripts and remodeling Alpha to be able to do something for high school students uh, called Youth Alpha. And so we built this film series. We traveled the whole world filming it. And we're releasing it this September. And right now, as we speak, you guys are going to represent some of the first people ever doing this course, which is phenomenal. There's about 500 groups doing this course across Canada starting the next couple weeks, and you guys are some of the first around the world to do it, which is so fun. So, 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 so for those of you who have like no idea what it is, haven't seen any clips online, I just want to show you one clip, um, and uh, we'll see how that goes. How's our audio doing? adventure is going to take us all over the world. We're going to hear stories and talk about ideas that you will never forget. You can think about us as your tour guides. We're here to point out some good stuff to stop and look at along the way. So Alpha is 12 sessions designed to engage us in a conversation about some of life's most important questions. We want to provoke you to think about what you believe and how you feel about certain faith issues. This isn't going to be a lecture where Ben and I do all the talking. Instead, during Alpha, you're going to get a chance to talk in small groups and ask questions as they come up. But before we go any further, I'm Ben, this is Jason, and we want to welcome you to Alpha. The average life expectancy in the developed world is about 80 years. But what are we supposed to do with 80 years on planet Earth? Hey, what's the point of all this time? Or more importantly, is there even a point at all? Alpha is all about asking life's biggest questions. But it can be a bit weird talking about something like life. It really is something we just do. Every day we wake up, get dressed, eat breakfast, maybe some cereal, then we go to school, sit in class, probably do some homework, maybe talk to some friends, then we go home, go back to bed, and do it all over again the next day. Just sort of happens. And so that's the very first clip of the first episode of Alpha. So that's, that's, uh, that's a few minutes. Every episode's about 20 minutes long, and there's 12 episodes that you do between 8 and 10 weeks, depending on how you structure the course. And so I just wanted to give you a taste of that. And so uh, we're going to dive into most of the time spending time talking about how do we lead small groups on Alpha. But just before we do that, I want to tell you three values and four elements. Everyone say three values. Three values. I want to tell you three values and then four elements. Here's the three values. The first value, the three values that help us shape the, the why of Alpha. Because I want you to know something. Video, whatever. Uh, how you do the meal, that's up to you. There's so many ways you can customize it, but I want you guys to know the values behind it so you know the whys. Because the whats are just expressions of the whys. If you got the why wrong, the what won't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? So here's the three values that shape what we do. The first is this, is Christian teaching. Christian teaching. One of the values that goes behind Alpha and what we do pretty much in any church on Sunday morning is we're going we're gonna to 
give Christian teaching. We, we believe there's something powerful, but open up the Word of God. You know what? I've been thinking a lot as I share my faith uh, about the resurrection. This has just been a recent thing on my mind. The resurrection. This is crazy that a man raised from the dead. And when we read the Bible, we discover that there's power in this message of the resurrection. So episode three on Alpha is why did Jesus die? And between episode two, which is who is Jesus, and episode three, we, we talk about the resurrection and it pops up through us. So we give Christian teaching, biblical teaching, and there's power in it. We believe that the truth of God rings true in people's hearts. There's something special about that. So one of the goals is that in through the talks, there'd be clear Christian teaching. The second value is this, is the dignity of the person. If you guys are taking notes, you can write that down. First value of Christianity. Second is dignity of the person. Everything we do on Alpha, and I think everything that happens in a good good youth ministry, good church context, respects the dignity of the individual, the dignity of the person. So the way we pray on Alpha considers guests. The way we have conversations on Alpha considers the guest. And we try not to put people in positions that disrespect their identity, disrespect the person that's there. And so we want to create a space where people can ask tough questions and be asked tough questions. But all the while we're thinking about how do we show respect and dignity to each person there. One of the ways we do that is remembering people's names. Another way we do that is never force somebody to answer a question. And there's a lot of things that you're going to hear throughout the teaching today, but behind that is this value of the dignity of the person. And the third value is the work of the Holy Spirit. We believe that God wants to win souls more than you and I do. How many people would agree with that? You know what I mean? Isn't that an encouraging thought? That God actually cares about this mission as much and more than we do. And so when we approach somebody, we need to remember, actually, this isn't the very first time that the, this isn't the beginning of God's work in their life. We're just coming into the middle of it. God is at work in the hearts of people. And Alpha will be a stage in their journey. And each night, on, some students might only come for one night. But we can remember and take hope that the Holy Spirit is at work in hearts. And there's going to be moments on Alpha where you feel like somebody asks a question. You know, and you feel like everything inside of you wants just to answer them or correct them or they say something crazy. You say, why do you think is Jesus so famous is one of the questions. And their response is, well, well, I think it's because, you know, uh, because of, uh, you know, Freemason society propagating around the world and alien invasions, you know. And you're like, everything inside of you wants to just say, are you, you, do you actually believe that? Like, do you want to just pause the conversation, correct them and tell them how ridiculous it is and do all that? But then you can remember that actually, okay, we want to create a safe place to have conversations. So I'm not going to just interrupt them. I'm not just going to correct them. We're going to let the teaching do the teaching. We're going to let the conversation be safe. And you can go home with hope knowing that the Holy Spirit is still at work in their heart. And the Holy Spirit is taking the teaching and trying to give roots to it in the hearts of the individual. And the Holy Spirit is at work bringing to mind things that you talked about. And so you can actually trust in the context of your discussion, the work of the Holy Spirit. And that's so important because we're going to say something later that's going to confront all of your understanding. It's going to be this. Don't answer every question people ask. And I remember being at Alpha training one time and somebody said, don't answer every question. I'm like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. If somebody's got a question, why would I not answer their question? And now I'm here a few years later telling you, don't answer every single question. So those are the three values. You got them? Should, I, should we do a recap? Christian teaching, the dignity of the individual, the dignity of the person, and the work of the Holy Spirit. And those three values shape the four elements that every single Youth Alpha Night will have. The first element is simple. It's fun. It's good to have fun together. It's good to have fun. And that fun that you do, showing a silly YouTube video or playing an icebreaker game or whatever it might be, that fun is so important because that loosens people up and helps them feel safe to answer questions. Honestly, the next element is food. Now, in every single group, this food element will look different. You know, I think it's awesome to do a meal. I don't know if, if how you guys will be doing in each group, whether you're doing snacks or something, but getting around a table or sitting on a couch together, having some chips, having some pop today at lunch today at lunch will be a game changer for us you'll see this happen when food gets on the table we start eating together our conversations will increase and our afternoon will feel different we'll be a bit more lethargic because the unhealthy food we eat but we'll also be more relaxed and lightened up after that time of talking about food food has this ability to help us connect so the first element's fun and food and then the next element is the talk 
every single week we'll have a talk, and this is, you see the value of Christian teaching, this is why the talk happens, and so in the talks we're going to go through the basics of the Christian faith, the first one is life, it's just questions of life that's big, it's the big question, the next one is who is Jesus, why did he die, how can I have faith, what's prayer about, what's the Bible about, who's the Holy Spirit, does God have a plan for my life, you know, what about church, what about telling others, and we go through this, and you know what I love about Alpha, is on our last talk, our last talk, not everyone there is going to be a Christian. We actually talk about why Christians should share their faith with others. And then we're going to let people at a table have a conversation about it, whether they're believers or not. And that's brilliant, because you know what we do? We put every single card on the table. There's no surprises. There's nothing. We have a talk on healing. How crazy is that? And then all of a sudden, we get to put it on the table, and people get to talk about it, and then pray for one another on these topics. I love that about the talk. I just want to show you guys... I just got this message on Facebook uh, because we're piloting a course in Dublin right now. And so we just pilot, just started this week, we're piloting a course in Dublin for my friend Johnny Somerville. So can I just read this to you guys? I just got this Facebook message yesterday. Uh, it was on this like private group we have for piloting courses around the world. It says this, so launched two alphas yesterday in a school. The film series was very well received. And one of my small groups was this young guy who was both very respectful and a declared Buddhist. As part of some banter, he explained how it annoys him when Christians just take out a verse from Scripture and say it's true. So I banterfully said that you're going to love the next part of the video, the part where Ben and Jason talk at length about the verse, I am the way, etc. So that part ended, and I went back to the small group, assuming I'd get a respectful yet frustrated response. And this is what he said. I love that part. I've never heard it talked about like that before. It was, it, I was, it was, it was interesting, or interested, I think that's a bit of a mistake, interested to hear that those words from Jesus were for the good of everybody. Hashtag love my job. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that awesome? And I love getting this because it reminds me that there's something in the teaching. There's something in that, that, that engaged with people, even this person. And then do you see how that worked out? Right away. What a great small group leader. Not defensive of the talk, but expecting to get a negative response. And what do you think about the time when they said that first? And they gave him a chance to share. What a game changer for that young guy. He's going to leave that very first time with a new perspective on Christianity and knowing that if he came back, there's a leader there that's willing to hear out his thoughts, that cares about what he believes, the dignity of the person. And there's so much demonstrated demonstration of the trust in the Holy Spirit in this. He's not worried and trying to be defensive. He didn't say, hey, I need to defend what Ben and Jason are about to do and what he's going to say. I need to defend it before he said, no, he said, I'm just going to let it happen and see what the Holy Spirit might do. Isn't that cool? Anyone else excited by that? I love getting that. I love getting that. And then the last thing is discussion. And so discussion is so important. That's the fourth element. Food, fun, talk, discussion. So discussion is going to happen in two ways, or three ways. One, very informally over dinner when people are arriving. Over dinner, early, that's not a time to drive discussion to any specific place. Just a, just casual discussion. The next place is you're going to see, I'm going to show you a clip right away. Um, you're going to see uh, that we throw to questions three times in every single episode. So the first one's always going to be an icebreaker, and there's going to be two other questions. And then we also provided discussion questions to follow. So I'll just show you this clip just so you can see uh, what it's going to feel like. Me, that's far fetched.
So every single episode, three times, you're going to see this screen. It's going to pop up. We're going to throw the questions on the street, and then it's going to come back, and there's going to be a black screen for 10 seconds. And that's where Grover runs to the projector or to whatever, presses pause, and then runs back to a small group, and uh, and then you talk about it in groups. And that might be for... Well, then you'll get a camp down after your conversation. Now you're like, what's happening next? They're at the Sea of Galilee. You'll have to check it out online to see it. <laughs> I'm pretty good salesman, I think. Uh, felt pretty good about that there. And so that's going to happen three times. It's going to throw uh, to the street interviews. And you know why we put the street interviews in there? It's because we wanted to give a range of answers to show that the, the question can be responded to in a variety of ways. And we wanted to permit the skeptic to disagree. We want to give, give permission that we're not here to all agree. That's not our goal. The goal is healthy conversation around this. So I, I have a few um, roles of a small group leader I want to tell you about. Is that cool? If you're taking notes, you can write these down. Otherwise, I bet if you're just listening, you'll have soak in the general ideas of all these. But a few roles. And, and so everyone will structure their small groups differently. One of the best ways I think to have it is to have a, a defined host at the table, a small group host. And then to have a host to have a helper. So for every table of, of four to ten students, there would be a host and a helper. And the role of the host is really to do the work of driving conversation. And the helper is there, not necessarily to talk very much, but to support the host. And they're going to work together. But here are the, ro the roles of all small group leaders. The first role is to keep balanced conversation. I wanted to show you what I think balanced conversation looks like, so I made a video. Here it is. What we have here is a typical small group on Alpha. Let me introduce you to the guys. Over here, we've got Swamp Viper, then Storm Shadow, Copperhead, Mr. Potato Head, who is the small group host, Chang Tatum, aka Duke, Legolas, also known as Orlando Bloom, who's coming in to help as the helper on this small group, Snake Eyes, and Alan Viper. We'll use these action figures and this ball to show you what a good conversation and good discussion looks like. This is the goal. It's fluid, it's balanced, everyone gets a chance to talk, it's going back and forth. The host is doing a good job of engaging people, and people are feeling free to share their ideas and have a healthy discussion. Now we want to show you a few examples of what we don't want. This is what we don't want, the host doing all the talking. Mr. Potato Head kind of has a big head, he's a bit powerful. He thinks that everyone should just listen to what he says. That is not a good discussion group. This is no good either. This is Swamp Viper. He's got stories to share. All he cares about is his voice being heard. That's not the goal. Swamp Viper and Shadow Storm are getting really into a deep conversation. Even worse, Copperhead and Snake Eyes are getting into a debate. Copperhead says, listen, Snake Eyes, I think your idea is stupid. And then Snake Eyes says, Copperhead, I think you're stupid, and spikes the ball at him. <laughs> this is the ultimate goal. Balanced discussion. People feel safe to share their ideas. People feel safe to be quiet. No one's getting shut down. People are sharing different ideas. Hosts and helpers are helping make things happen. This is the goal. This is great discussion. And great small groups end on time. Because people have rides coming. Let's go to Tatum. Later, Orlando. <laughs> and I think that's actually a great picture. And the reason why is because it's a bit of a dance, isn't it, leading a small group? Oh, I had a great thought about today. Do you know why I love that today's happening? Because you can become a better small group leader. You can become a better youth leader. You can become a better youth worker. Training helps. Thinking about what you're going to do and going with a plan helps. I've noticed that over time, I've become a way better small group leader than I was when I started. So on one hand, be encouraged. If you feel like you're a horrible small group leader, that's okay. You'll get better. But also, this training literally helps. I think I was in denial about that. I thought that, that being a good small group leader was just like a personality trait. But I realized that there's things that we can put in practice that really help us become better. And that's the goal of today. That's the goal. So keeping balance is important. As a small group leader, we can keep balance by engaging different people and helping guide the conversation. So if you're a small group leader and you're doing all the talking, Mr. Potato Head, Mr. Big Head, you're a bad small group leader. That's not the goal. It's for you to reteach. Remember, the, the talk does the teaching, and the small group is a safe environment for conversation. 
And another thing that you don't want to do is just have a conversation with one person at your table. And so there's a five minute window of conversation between the next clip, and it's just you and one person talking the whole time. You're missing the point. It's not a safe environment. You want to engage different people, and you can do it in different ways. You can say, hey, what do you guys think? What does anybody else think about that idea? One of the things that's uh, most tempting is someone's going to want to throw every single question to you. The best thing that you guys can say, you got to practice this line, is what do you guys all think about that? What do you guys, that's an awesome question. Thank you for sharing. What do you guys all think? And keeping balance and pulling people in who are, are, are feeling quiet and then engaging people, you know, moving away from people who are taking all the conversation. And you need to know, the goal isn't that everyone feels forced to talk. There's gonna be some people that's not gonna be till week three or four that they feel good to have conversations. But by week 10 or week eight, you're gonna be blown away by the quality of the conversation. The first thing that small group leaders do is keep balance. The second thing, keep topic. Try to keep the topic together. I'm gonna to show you the discussion guide that we built in a little while, but, but try to keep it on topic. Now, you don't have to think a very narrow topic. You can think of things in broad topics. What's the theme of the episode? What is a conversation that's helpful for our table? But if somebody's like, oh man, when Jesus said that, they remind me of last night's episode of Lost. Anybody see Lost last night? That was epic, you know, da da da. And it's gone, like, and, it's, and you're like, whoa, 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 I gotta pull it back in, keep it on topic. So you, we, we keep balance and then we keep it on topic. We also help guide the conversation. Now, it's not that we manipulate the conversation, it's that we consider where could this conversation go in a healthy way? Where could we help lead this conversation? And that helps shape the questions that you ask. And so we're thinking about my role is to keep it balanced, to keep it on topic and to guide it. Your role is also to keep the conversation open, to keep it open. And how you do that is by not criticizing people's ideas, by not responding negatively to people's ideas. When somebody says a, a, a statement about why they think Jesus is so famous, or what they believe about life or God, uh, you keep the conversation open by responding kindly. Thank you for sharing. You know, you can respond kindly without agreeing. We have this thing in Canadian culture where we kind of be like, you know what I mean? And then we ask somebody just to agree with us on everything. And I used to find myself really, really torn because I'm like, how do I show that I'm listening without agreeing? And so we just need to think that through. Maybe even practice that. How do we show I'm, I'm with you? And say, yeah, I hear what you're saying. That's so interesting. I appreciate you sharing without saying, yeah, yeah, totally. Totally, yeah, 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 totally. And they'd be like, did I just agree with something I totally don't agree with? They're like, but that's not the goal. Agreement isn't the goal of the table. Honesty and openness is the goal. So we keep it open. And we keep it honest. We keep it honest. Your posture and your words, the more transparent and honest you can be, the more you can bring honesty to the table. And lastly, small group leaders are friendly. They make a friendly environment. Make it a friend where people are welcomed and people are missed. One thing that stands out to me a ton is a, a girl that, that went on Quest when I was in grade 10 uh, in our high school named Lindsay. Now, in the first week of Quest, somebody asked her if she believed in God or not. Do, why, why, do you believe in God? And, and she said, no, I, I don't believe in God. And somebody kindly said, why not? You know, and that's, a, that's a fair question. It's not like, oh, why? <laughs> like, prove it. It's, no, it's like, why not? Because I'm interested in your life. Do you see the difference? You see the difference? It's not why, prove it. It's why, share with us. And so somebody said, why? And she said, I don't believe in God because that's stupid. And that's when I, as a good small group leader, said, no, 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 Lindsay, you're stupid. <laughs> no, of course not. That's not what you do. That's horrible small group leading. She said, I don't believe in God because that's stupid. And in my heart, I had a hunch that that wasn't the real reason, but I left it at that. Some of the most wisdom you'll show on small groups is to let somebody just have that moment where she can, this might even be our first time sharing that with somebody at a table of people that she's worried to offend. And for me as the Christian, first day, I don't believe in God because I think it's stupid. And for me not to demonstrate offense, all of a sudden created safety. Do you see how that happens? Now, but check this out. First week, I don't believe in God because that's stupid. Week six or seven, after she's been with this small group for weeks together talking, she feels safe, she feels heard, she feels listened. This is what she said. She said, I don't believe in God because of this. And then she described a story when um, there was some abuse in her household between her parents. And so there's police coming. It was this wild scene when she was a, a young girl. And she says, I was up in my room praying that God would save the day, and he didn't. And that's why I don't believe in God. And that's way different than her first answer, hey? And my response to her first answer might have been, if I was trying to prove her, would have been, well, let me show you all the reasons why believing in God is not stupid. Let me, let me show you some, some carefully outlined apologetics, which I think have their place and might be important for somebody to point them towards reading. But as I listened to Lindsay, it actually wasn't about logic. It was about something in her heart. She needed to feel that God cared for her because she felt like God didn't care about her life. 
So as a small group, what do we say at that moment? You know what the good news is about being a great small group leader is you don't have to have answers for those moments. Say, I'm so sorry that happened. I'm so sorry. Be with them and pray that the Holy Spirit through the people at the table would show her love. I remember we had an opportunity to say, like, I really believe that when you hurt, God hurts. I remember that was one of the only things that I could come out of my mouth. I just really believe that even when you're hurting, God hurt. I don't know why he didn't save the day. One of the coolest things Ben, ben sharing in the episode of prayer, and we're talking about God answers prayers, he does this. But Ben says something really interesting. That's the other tall, skinny guy. Uh, boy's also skinny. He used to be really skinny. In the video, he's, you know, just Ben. Um, Ben's my buddy. Um, <laughs> and it's somebody. Just gonna get some water. Talk amongst to yourselves. <laughs> so Ben's, Ben's in the video, episode on prayer, and this is what he says. He says, I hope at this point in time, you don't think that Jason and I have all the answers. And then he goes on to exp explain the day he came home. It's a powerful part. It's one of my favorite parts of the whole series. He describes the day he came home, and he saw his dad at the top of the stairs crying. And he says, Mom's not coming home today. He talks about the day his parents had a divorce. And he says, I went into my room, and I, put on, I, I grabbed my guitar. I played the only worship song I knew. And I was in my bedroom praying that God would change this. And he says, I, I felt the peace of God fill my heart. And he goes, today my parents are still not together. I don't understand why. And so he just, he throws this honest, this honest thing on the table and that's what's beautiful about Alpha. That's what's beautiful about small groups. It's not about having all the answers. It's not about defending God. It's about making people feel safe enough to explore life's biggest questions. I always think back to that story about Lindsay to remind myself that sometimes people need to be heard before they'll listen. And sometimes this is actually about that. And discussion helps us get to the bottom of that. Small group leaders don't answer all the questions. Small group leaders don't answer. So here, here, we'll go through this. So a lot of people are going to ask you questions at your table, and I want to help us figure out the difference between ones that we do answer and ones that we don't. You guys with me? You guys with me? Okay, somebody asked you, where's the bathroom? That's where you say, I don't know. What do you guys all think? No, 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 no. no. That's simple. You can say, it's just down the hallway, on the right, guys first, girls second, right? Okay. It's not, I'm not saying don't answer any question. I'm saying, I'm trying to get at the spirit of this thought, okay? You guys with me? Yeah. Okay, the next question is, is, is a more interesting one. Somebody might say this, hey, I, I opened my Bible last night, and there's weird numbers all over the place. What the heck are those numbers? This is an interesting one where you might say, really quickly, oh, that's, that's, that's a great, somebody did it, it's not in the original manuscript, somebody did it afterwards, it's just numbers to help us find our way around. You know, or you might say, hey, does anyone else know what those numbers are? And I'm sure somebody, even at the table with any limited Bible knowledge, might be able to answer that question. So what you're doing is you're, you're, you're welcome to answer that question. That might be a call you made. But you might be wise to throw it to the, the, the table and set a precedence that you're not the broker of all truth. Now here's another question. Somebody might say, how do we know that what Jesus said is even true? Or how do we know that what's in the Bible is even true? And that's a question where you're going to stand very tempted. You're going to stand very tempted to explain it. To, to come up with a defense. Perhaps you don't even feel like you know the answer to that question. That might be a question you have. And that's a beautiful time for you to say, hey, that's a great question. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? And a few things you can do. One is, is throw it to the group. The second is you need to make sure that if you do even begin to engage and answer this question, that you don't monopolize the time. You don't monopolize the time. You need to defend the, the everyone who's going to try to make you a broker of truth at the table. Remember, the, the talks do the teaching, and what your job is, isn't to answer every question. It's to create a safe place where people can ask questions and explore these things. A really great small group leader will remember that question. They'll write it down later, and they might find a book, or they might find another source, and then maybe later on the course, as the question might come up again, you might, you might re-bring up that question, like, hey man, have you been still been wondering about that? Anyone else been wondering about that still? And you bring it back to the table because in some episodes we actually address that issue. So there might be an issue, but we, we talk about the reliability of scriptures in, in episode six. And so you might say, hey man, I, I, I want you to know that episode six we talk about that. Uh, but if you can't wait, here's something that you can check out. And so just a small group leader really tries to protect the time for discussion. That's not about answering every single question. It's not about answering every single question. And you need to know that when somebody shares a wild idea, it says, I actually don't believe that the Bible is reliable. That, everything inside of you is going to try to say, I need to defend that right now, I need to defend that right now. But here's what could happen. If you right there try to defend it, whether you succeed or not, you just set the precedent that when you say something contrary to Christian belief, you're going to get talked to. 
you're going to get that kind of defense. And, and why it's important for us to manage that responsibility carefully is because there's some people in week two, three, or four won't open their mouth because all they want to know is see, is this a safe place for me to really say what I believe? And here's what I've discovered. Here's what I've discovered. I, remember, I, remember, I noticed this the most with my friend Jared. He and I were on this, a journey uh, together. We debated all the time about God and faith. And, and we'd go in circles. And so we, we, we went to Quest, and then we went to Alpha together in the basement of our church. And the talks helped us move the conversation forward. The talks, by, by the very fact that they're topical and they address specific questions, helped us address different issues in his journey. But for Jared, this was some of the very first times that he ever heard his thoughts out loud. How do people know that when we're part of the discussion, we learn way better? When we can actually hear our thoughts, and then as we're part of the discussion, when we actually learn something, we feel like we learn something on our own, we came upon a truth, we own that truth way more carefully. Way more, it's way more special to us. So when we're at a table, and we start sharing our thoughts out loud, do you know what? For that student that says, I don't believe in God because something, 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 and it just seems like the most ridiculous answer. When you just leave space, they might go home that night and be like, just the first time they even hear some of these thoughts out loud might be so confronting for their experience. For some students, it would be the first time talking about faith. And it's going to be such a journey. It's so delicate and so special. And how many people know this? Even me talking to you, I know what I want to say to you. I know what I want to say. And what's coming to my mouth is actually a bit different. As I try to wrestle to explain these ideas, what you're hearing is a little bit different than what I really want to say. And so that's the same for people in these discussion groups. That for them to try to take these thoughts and feelings that they have about God and try to articulate them is such a delicate process. And it'll be, it'll be growth for them as well. And so that's why it's so important to keep the conversations open and not to answer everything. I want to show you guys a, a, a picture of the discussion guide. So I'll, I'll zoom in on each part of this later. But this is a discussion guide that you can download online. Jason will and, and, and your, your group leader will help get these in all the small group leaders' hands. And uh, don't worry, I'll zoom in on each one. But this is simple, it's just question one, question two, question three, and then post-discussion. And what we have after each question, because we'll throw to this one, episode two, the first question is, have you ever had an encounter with a celebrity? And then we have what are called like supporting questions. And we've, we've written questions for you as small group leaders. If you feel like everyone's tried to answer that question, not, it's just dead conversation. <laughs> we've provided a few more questions to help you keep it moving. But the main thing is, as a small group leader, you need to be working out questions and thinking about it. So let's just go through these together. I just want to walk through them. Uh, each of these three questions in the post-discussion for episode two as a, as a way for us to practice a little bit together. Is that cool? Is that cool? Is that helpful? Okay, first question, icebreaker question. What's the goal of icebreaker question? Fun. So we were on the streets uh, in Vancouver, and we had people on the streets of New York and London answering, asking these questions on the street. And uh, some of the responses that came back were super interesting because we're like, have you, ever had, have you ever had an encounter with a celebrity? The first question of uh, who is Jesus? Talk on who is Jesus. And some people were like, um, some, some of the people asking the questions didn't really like phrase it lightly. They kind of merged in with all these ever, other intense questions that we're asking people on the streets. And so when it came to the question, have you ever had an encounter with a celebrity? Somebody's like, was in that like really contemplative, thoughtful mode. It was like, I don't even know if I believe in celebrity. You know, aren't we all just people at the end of the day? You know, like, you know? And so, so the big thing is like, the, this isn't the goal for that. This is just fun. And so if we've written a bad, fun question, change it. Ask a better one. You know what I mean? Like, I guess the point is like, the first question is just to have fun together at a group to talk. And it, it might go into some meaningful conversation. That's fine. But it's just to engage people. Do you see what I mean? And so, we, you know, um, and then we wrote an asterisk. It's a good idea to have everyone introduce themselves again because it's week two. You might want to put name tags on, whatever. And then supporting questions. We just asked a few other questions around the same topic to keep the conversation alive. If you could meet anyone in all of history, who would it like? Who would you? Who would you like it to be? Uh, has anyone ever mistaken you for a famous person? And then you guys might think of another. What's another great question you could ask here? Who knows? Who can think of another great question you could ask for here? Just just to have fun around this idea. It's a muscle. You guys, you're working it out. We're just getting, we're just kind of getting into it. Anyone got one? Grover, give me a question, man. Um, what would you say? You're at, you've been in youth ministry uh, for 51 years. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Do you guys see Lost last night? He's gone over there. <laughs> when you become famous, what will you be famous for? Yeah, great question. Oh. That's a fun question. Can give this guy a Pepsi hat or something? <laughs> okay, boom, second question, second question. Okay, now we're getting, we saw this one come up, now we're getting a little bit more serious, right? It's, we're getting a little more serious, we've, we've introduced more content. The second question is, why do you think Jesus is so famous? You guys saw that. And were you interested by the range of answers that people gave? 
Now again, I want you to understand that, that what's the spirit of this question? What's the thrust of it? It's not that we would actually get a concise reason. The goal isn't that at the table we'd all decide why he's... You see, see, it's not about us agreeing together on why Jesus is famous. It's about talking about the person of Jesus. And we believe that this idea of Jesus being so famous, it's a premise that we introduce. We, we, make, we make the claim that he's the most famous man that ever lived. We think this is a compelling thought process for a high school student to begin a conversation with Jesus. And so then we just throw, we rephrase the question in a couple ways. Or uh, Why do you think a man from Israel who lived 2,000 years ago is still talked about today? That's a fascinating question to me. I think it's an interesting question for students to ask. And then here's another one I think is really great. How did his name become a swear word? And so again, what is the goal for us to all agree on? I think his name became a swear word because, you know, originally people must have been praying to the Lord Jesus when they were in pain, and then all of a sudden, you know, no, I don't know what the answer is. I'm sure somebody does know a concise reason for that, but that's not the goal. The goal is for us to begin to have a conversation with Jesus. This is episode two. All of a sudden you've got a group of high school students talking about Jesus at a table. For some students, this might be the first time talking about Jesus. I was doing a seminar at a camp up in uh, Penticton, British Columbia. And I went around the group to ask questions, and I realized that it was awkward for people to say the name Jesus. These were Christian kids, and whenever they were talking about their faith and the testimony, actually saying Jesus was actually a little bit uncomfortable for them. And maybe you've never experienced that before, but it was really eye-opening for me. That's like, actually talking about Jesus is so uncommon that it feels a bit interesting at first. So our goal is actually to talk about it in a way that feels safe and fun. Okay, now let's keep moving. Third question. I love this question. What parts of the life of Jesus stand out to you? Now keep in mind, the whole episode, we've just been telling stories about Jesus. Telling stories about Jesus. So some, some of them might come to mind really quickly. Some people might have, oh, I heard that he did this thing. Is that true? And you know, all these, I was watching The Simpsons one time and they showed this thing. Is that true? And that's a fun time for people to talk about. We just have some supporting questions. So you throw this question to the group. And then you see if there's any responses, and then if you feel like it's dying or it's not connecting with people, you might phrase it in a few other ways that come to your mind, or throw out any of these questions. You know, is there any specific story about the message of Jesus that stands out to you? And then we, we put some examples from the episodes. Do you find anything about Jesus' life hard to believe, etc.? And so that's the idea, okay? And so for each of these questions, you want to leave three to six minutes to answer, okay, in your groups, depending on the size of your group, and then and then if it's a 13-year-old boys group might be a three minute response. If it's a 17 year old girls group, they might have no problem feeling 10 minutes of conversation. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so you'll just, but you'll just feel out, you'll just feel out the room and feel out the group. And then we provided post discussion. Now we put optional here because this really is optional. This is after the video is done. Do you want to keep chatting about these things? And so we put a bunch of questions and it's just, you can lead a five to 15 minute discussion afterwards. And again, what I want you guys to know is these just these questions that we written, it was just me and Ben in a room plucking out questions. They're not magical. They're not even necessarily perfect. In fact, my, I, I bet that people from all over Canada are going to submit better questions and next year we'll revise them. And I hope that's not earth shattering for you guys to know, but it's just us in a room trying to think, how do we get people talking? What, what, the reason why I tell you that is because you might know better than me. You know your group better than I do. So don't, this isn't the letter of the law. This is just to help you. It's just a guide. It's just a guide. So that's, 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 the, that's it on, on leading small groups. So the next few minutes, I just want to talk about a couple other things and then have a few minutes for conversation, for some questions. Uh, one thing that I want to encourage you guys to do is um, to be praying for your group. Prayer is something that comes up on Alpha. A good small group leader will be praying for the group. Uh, you know what's a great thing I realize I'm praying for a group? It'll help you remember their names. And uh, when you remember their names on week two, it's going to feel so awesome. Work hard to remember their names and then pray for them. Pray for them all the time. Pray that God would touch their hearts. Remember, we're, one of the values of the we talked about was the work of the Holy Spirit. And so when we, we partner with the work of the Holy Spirit through prayer, so we pray for them. But actually on Alpha, there's going to be a few times where you get to pray with them in person, which is crazy. And when I first did Alpha, I, I, everything inside of me was like, whoa, 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 we're going to actually let people pray? I'm like, you can't do, you can't, you can't do that. That's too weird. But what I realized is that when you have safe, honest environments, you can actually introduce space for God to work with people. So when we talk about prayer on Alpha, there's going to be a few places you see it. I'll just describe it to you really quickly. After episode two, three, and four, Ben and I are going to pray on the screen, and it's going to pan up and it's going to disappear. So you don't have to stay out and stare at us praying the whole time. It's just going to fade to black. But we're going to actually give people a chance to respond and put their life in Jesus' hands through responding in prayer. And then, and then um, we want to encourage you guys, if it's right, 
as, as leaders and everything, to think about, we're, we're not, we're not going to do that after every episode, but you might want to give that opportunity again a few times on the course. Potentially on the weekend away, the Alpha weekend, some people call it the Holy Spirit weekend. That's a really good time. A couple, week, couple months ago, I was doing a Holy Spirit weekend. I'm like, just before we pray, uh, just to encounter the reality of the Holy Spirit, does anyone here want to just give their life to Jesus? And somebody put up their hand and went like this. And so I'm not sure if she was just like, I don't know if she was like, I'm sure, but, but I prayed with her anyways. She's like, ah! I think I might want it. I thought that was awesome. <laughs> After episode five on prayer, we're actually going to encourage you guys in your group to pray. And there's three things you need to remember when you pray. Keep your prayer short, keep your prayer simple, and keep your prayer sincere. We want to demonstrate reproducible prayer. Short, simple, sincere. Use the same voice when you pray as when you're talking in your small group. The same voice, okay? And try to use the same sort of dialect. The same sort of wording. Why? So you can demonstrate you can demonstrate simple prayer. And here's the best thing: you give everybody a chance, eyes open, eyes closed, whatever you want. You give everybody a chance at your table to pray. And you say, if you don't want to pray, just say pass. That's totally cool. But if you do want to pray, you can pray a short, simple prayer. And you might have some things that people want prayer across the table. And you'll be this is you almost for sure you hear this. God, I don't even know if you're real, but uh, just pray for Jason. I really like him. So uh, and thanks for these friends. Amen. You know, or something like that. And what's cool is like, that might be the first time somebody tried to talk to God. Like, it's so fun. And so that will be the next time you see an environment of prayer. And then after week five, we really want to encourage you guys to do that after every session. Hey, let's just pray together. Maybe there's anyone have anything going on this week that we can pray for. Short, simple prayers. Give everybody a chance. And the same things will show up again um, on, on, on after episode nine, which is on how do I be filled with the Holy Spirit? In episode nine, there's no small group discussion. The reason why we did that is we made the episode shorter, so there's time to pray afterwards. And the idea is that you'd create a space, whether it's with worship music or it's in silence or it's whatever, where you'd, you'd actually invite God to fill our hearts with his power. We talk about the things that the Holy Spirit does in the episode before. We talk about how the Holy Spirit comforts us, how he empowers us, how he gives us the fruit of the Spirit. And we say, if you want to receive any of these things, why don't you just invite the Holy Spirit to fill you? A few... Uh, a little while ago, I was, I was leading the Holy Spirit weekend with the church, and there was this dude there, this really obnoxious, loud guy. And he was so obnoxious. He did not care about my talks. He did not want to listen at all. And at lunch, he was just so annoying. He was just so annoying. He just wanted to agitate everybody. Um, and so it was a real challenge for me not to, like, spar with him in conversation, but just to let him say the things. He wanted to provoke people, and we try not to, like, you know, whatever. He was just one of those guys. You might know him. And I remember we were praying in this session, or I was giving the talk, and he was at the back the whole time, just arms crossed, just didn't care at all. And I said, let's, uh, let's just pray and ask God to fill us with his Holy Spirit. And one kid who just gave his life to the Lord on that same weekend came up to the back and put his hand on the shoulder of this big guy, and I watched it happen. It was like, it was so special. It was so special. I watched this guy like this, just like this. And his other buddy just puts his hand on his shoulder. And all of a sudden, this big dude who's just like not interested just started to melt. I just watched him sort of begin to kind of shake his shoulders and his head fell. And he began to weep. The power of God touched his heart. The Holy Spirit touched his life, and it was a game changer. It just melted as the power of God touched him. We make space for that. Christian teaching, the dignity of the person, and the power of the Holy Spirit, we lean into that through that. Through that. I want to talk very quickly, uh, very, very quickly, about um, creating the environment. Here's the best tip I can talk about about creating the space. As you guys work with your, your, uh, the different hosts and your different, your different super groups and stuff like that at different campuses, and you guys work together, I want you to think about the environment that you create. I was at one Youth Alpha course, and they were in a big gymnasium. They made a cool backdrop on the stage, but the whole place just felt open and loud. They had no food. It was just one of those environments. Uh, they had a little bit of snacks, but it just was, it, it just what it, it just felt open and the conversation lacked. Like the noise in the room felt awkward. You didn't feel any sort of sense of privacy at your table. And there's just something didn't work about the environment. I was running all these courses because I was piloting this this content. We were we ran six courses but I, uh, to pilot it, so it was back to back nights. So the next night I was in another group that had a, a room just like this actually. They decorated, they put streamers on the roof, they put banners and pictures on the wall. Every single table had like a different centerpiece that some girls made connected to the theme of the talk and the dinner. And so it was like Mexican night, all these different things. They would do all these cool things at the table. And then they do a full meal together. And it was like a toony meal or something like that. And if you couldn't pay, that was okay. And I just, the, the difference because of the environment actually impacted the success of the conversations. So what I want to encourage you guys to do is engage your creative, your creativity, build a team around it, and consider the space. 
Pick a space that is welcoming and safe, and think about how the room feels. Think about how the screen will look. Can people see it? Can people hear it? What are they gonna, what's the first thing somebody's gonna see when they walk in the door? I even think this is the best way. Walk through it yourself. Okay, when you walk, you're, you're, you're a first time guest at church, or first time guest on Alpha. What's the first thing you see? You're probably like, well, they need somebody to come say hi to them. Perfect. Get some people on greeting then, okay? So now you're, you're like, you write this down, you're, you're, you guys are dreaming together. We need greeters. You're like, okay, well, well, what if they get there and hardly anyone's there? It's just an empty room. Well, it's like, well, let's make sure that maybe there's music playing. So we should have music playing. Who's gonna make a song list? And begin to think about the environment and all of that needs to step back to the why. What's the why? That people would feel safe, that people would feel welcome, that people would feel at home to have comfort. So create a space that's special and fun and memorable and engage in all ways that good conversation could happen. I was having breakfast with a guy named Bob at a conference in Edmonton. And I, I, when I'm not traveling with Rach and Hudson, I travel with some of my buddies. My buddy Joey came down uh, really late from, he slept in or whatever. He came down to breakfast and I, and I set up this meeting with this guy, Bob. He's like this, this really hard guy to get a hold of. I had to Google his, his email address and, and he lives in another country and I just knew he was in town. Like, can you please have breakfast with me? And so, you know, I felt like this guy was a big deal. And I told Joey, this guy's a big deal. Don't be late, okay? And so I'm at this table and Bob's talking and talking and talking and telling stories and teaching us stuff. And then Joey comes down a half an hour later and Bob stops what he's doing, looks at Joey and says, hey man, come sit down. And then just picked up what, where he was talking before. And Joey talked about that experience all weekend long. He's like, man, I just, I don't know what it was, but I felt so welcomed at that table instantly. I felt so well, because Joey has been in a lot of meetings with me where I've met with guys like Jason Frizzell, and you know, they're just so just in their world. And like, you know, <laughs> Joey comes by and they don't care about Joey. They don't, and, and, and actually, that, that we did, Joey was here when we met with Jason. Jason was really nice to him and welcoming, so that's, that's not true. But, but that actually happens a lot where I'll be meeting with somebody, Joey's with me, and they don't care about Joey. He feels it. So sometimes he'll just walk out to see if they even notice. But he talked about this experience with Bob. And so I think one of the things you need to talk about as small group leaders is how do we make people feel very, very, very welcome. Do a walkthrough of the night. Do a walkthrough that I need your imagination as a team to imagine what would that feel like for somebody to be there? What can we do practically to make people feel safe? I want to come back to this guy that I've said over and over again. I want to remind you, so I, want to, I just, we have to, we have to hit this home. The most important thing I can leave you with is that the Holy Spirit's on your team. The Holy Spirit is real. Jesus is so interested in changing lives. God is so in love with people. And what we can do is we get to show up, we get to be faithful, we can try to sharpen our skills, but you're gonna feel like you don't have answers to questions. You're gonna feel like you get in conversation that you don't know what to do. You're gonna feel like there's gonna be these times where there's prayers that you're so worried. What if God doesn't show up? And I want you to know what, it's okay. It's not all on your shoulders. It's not all on your shoulders as small group leaders. It's not all on your shoulders as, as youth leaders. The Holy Spirit is on your side. He wants to equip and empower you. So I just, I do want to pray for you uh, that you would feel strengthened by the Holy Spirit and that he would give you wisdom and discernment to guide these conversations. And, 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 and Jesus said this to his disciples. He said, don't be afraid of what you'll say when you come before these people for I'll give you the words at the right time. And that's real. That's real for us to say. So we can go into nights being like, Holy Spirit, I don't know what kind of conversation you're coming up with. Would you help me with words? Would you help me with words? And I trust that he's going to bring people into your life, uh, books into your life, conversations like that are going to help mold you and shape you and prepare you for all the conversations you're going to have. I wanted to leave time for Q&A, but I, I spent it all talking. And uh, do you want to do some Q&A? Yeah, Can I do 10? Okay, I want to pray for you and we'll just do Q&A. Is that okay? Father God, I just thank you so much for this time together and for these youth leaders giving up a Saturday morning to become better of being youth leaders. God, I know that this represents a real love for students and that actually giving up a Saturday morning is just, the, just, the, just scratching the surface of the hours they're given to put into this. And I just am so inspired by that. I pray that you would encourage their hearts. God, I pray that you would um, give them a passion for your kingdom. God, a passion for the lost. And would you come right now, God, by the power of your Holy Spirit and strengthen us and comfort us and encourage us. But on our own, we do not have the skills necessary to change the world. But we believe you use people by the power of your Holy Spirit. So if you're here, guys, would you just maybe, if, that, if you feel like, hey man, I just, I just really, even in this moment, sense a need for the Holy Spirit's help, would you just ask him in your own heart, would you fill me, Holy Spirit? Would you empower me, Holy Spirit? 
And the answer is yes, Jesus says. How much more, Jesus says in Luke 11, I believe, how much more will your Heavenly Father, who knows how to give good gifts, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Strengthen us, Spirit. Unite us together. That we can change the world. To make you famous. To glorify you. Anyone discouraged? Encourage them. Anyone feeling defeated? Build them up. Anyone feeling like, ah, I don't know if I have energy for another few weeks, let alone another season of youth ministry. Just put passion in your heart. Put passion in their heart. And God, more than we want to actually change the world, we want to serve you. So we dedicate all of this, God, to worship, to you. God, take our gifts, take our talents, take our time. We give it to you as a sacrifice. Living sacrifice. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay, I take two for prayer, eight minutes I've got for Q&A. So I'm going to try to answer fast. I'm going to, talk, I'm going to use my fast voice, my extra fast voice. But who's got questions? Yeah, right there. What's your name, dude? Austin. Austin, what's the question? Amen. There's, I know you're saying that safety and feeling comfortable in the group is important. If there's another uh, person in the group that's being the one attacking the other members of the group, what's your best shot at trying to... Brilliant question. Say? Brilliant question. So we used to, in Alpha, talk about how you might pull that person aside afterwards and give them a talk, and that's you, you might do that. That was like usually our best strategy. It was like, hey, not like a, an intense talk, but like, hey, dude, I just want to chat really quickly, like, you know, whatever. But then we realized, actually, we can actually, even early on, show that same video that I showed. You know, we can talk about it at our table. Be like, hey guys, I want you guys to know the goal for conversation is, uh, is, is balance, is that we wouldn't have one person talking all the whole time. And so even actually just sharing that idea, hey guys, I want you to know that one of our goals is that everyone would get a chance to share, and so I'm going to do my best not to do all the talking, and if I do, you guys can give me one of those weird, you can wink at me, or you can give them a, sing a signal when you're talking too much, you can tell your group to do that, and that will be kind of a fun way for you to kind of educate the group on that. But ultimately, it'll be uh, a one-off thing. Whenever you're, you're in small groups and there's somebody that's being an issue, uh, talk to the small group leader and make it a matter of prayer right away. Make it a matter of prayer right away. Say, guys, I need your help praying for this person uh, because it, he's become problematic. Uh, another thing you do is do engage him. Just have a chat with him. If it, if it doesn't seem to be working, he's not getting the hit as the group, you can just grab him very casually and say, hey, I just wanted to let you know that we love having you here so much and I just noticed that some people aren't getting a chance to talk because of, of how it's going. And then, Another thing is just this really weird balance where you, you try to actually buffer the conversation as it's appropriate away from those people. And that's the real dance of being a small group leader. So there's no perfect answer. I hope some of those things help. And then keep it as a conversation amongst your peers. Okay, next question. Yeah. Yeah, I'm um, just wondering because I'm going to be helping with doing an adult alpha yeah, group yeah. too. So just kind of think of the dynamics of our, or at least many yeah. of the super groups here. Um, so, for example, we've got some fairly big youth groups. So, yeah. say we've got 20 kids or whatever. And yeah. I'm just wondering about the small group discussion totally. dynamic. So, if you're watching the video together, that's great. Everybody's together. Yeah. Would it be a good idea then to break them off? 100%. Small group Almost just like this. Video? Almost just yeah. like this, yeah. So with adult alpha, there's no um, breaks in the middle. It's all afterwards. So you might actually leave to different parts of the building. So what you want to do as best as possible with the facility, the space you have, would be to do something like this to get in groups of 5 to 10, no more than 10. Uh, I think smaller to a degree is better. Two small is too confronting. It's like there's two leaders and one person, not good, right? <laughs> but, but totally, you're totally right. And so it's, it, it's, it's being in smaller groups, spreading out enough at their space. Um, but honestly, even if it's like this, we could have a successful youth alpha, even with four or five, six more tables in here. And it would just be the, the, the noise in the room would elevate and it would work. Uh, and then what you can do is if you're going to do the discussion afterwards, you can spread out and do stuff like yeah, that. So, so if you wanted to, yeah, totally, totally. totally. And I think the big thing is uh, work with what you've got. If you've got the resource to do a meal, do a meal. If you don't, don't. If you've got a great facility, you've got tons of space, awesome. If you feel like the facility is not working for you, but that's the only one you got, that's okay. It's going to be all right. Work with what you've got. But that's a brilliant point. Thank you. Any other question? Yeah, what's your name? I'm Kylie. Kylie, yeah. Um, so our kids, they're majority of them in grade 12 this year. Yeah. And so are we able to not like push our responsibility on them, but kind of like if we feel that one is like kind of in this place where they're ready to like facilitate yeah. or something, are we able to yeah. get them in like totally. the... I love that. That, that would okay. be the goal. Okay. That would be the goal. And so when we talk about um, hosts and helpers, um, we talk about uh, two opportunities at a couple different levels where people can be involved. You know, if it's like they could be the table helper, you know, you might even want to make them be the host and you're the helper. Whatever works. Jay, are you guys um, making the training videos available? Or how are you guys doing the training? There's, there's some training videos. What's the plan with that? Yes. 
Yes. So guys, there's, there's three, there's, there's no plan. That's okay, no, it's totally good. They're free, they're free online. Um, with, so, you know, whoever's, you know, whoever's got access to the course, you can register the course you've got if no one's registered it for your group or whatever. Uh, you know, Grover would ha happily, like, put them all on DVDs for you guys and distribute them. But we have three training videos that are meant to be done with, with groups, like, three or four or 30 or 40 or 50, whichever. And uh, they really walk through all those different things. So that's be how you would train. Uh, high school students, and if you had three or four leaders in your group and you took initiative to be like, I want to do youth alpha training with those four leaders to help them, I promise you, it would be a game changer for them. It's all about leadership, it's all about their ideas, it's teaching them how to pray, how to lead discussion, it's really cool. I think it would be really empowering for them, so that's great, that would be a goal. Thanks for asking that. Ms. Kyla? Yeah. yeah. That's a great question. Any other questions? My clock says I've got three more minutes. Yeah. Um, so if you're talking of um, sort of reaching out to kids say that are Buddhist and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I know for our Saddle Ridge group, at least, uh, we're, we're just starting up, so we're reaching out to the kids that are already in the church. Yeah. So those kids are going to be coming to us and asking how to reach out to others. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions that we can pass along to them? Great question. What was your name? Mark. Mark, thanks for asking that. Awesome question. Um, you want to really empower students to invite their friends. I think that even communicating this now, hey, we're doing this alpha thing, and we'd love for you to invite your friends as a good start. I think that um, in most cases, whenever I've been part of an alpha group in our church, it won't be youth leaders like randomly inviting people at McDonald's. That does happen. People, that does happen all the time. But it will be mostly students inviting their friends. And so one of the things you can do, Mark, is like start engaging students now in the conversation. Like, hey, this would be really fun if we actually start engaging our friends. And little things you can do, like doing a sample at youth alpha night, like a sample night to demonstrate it, is an easy way for people to see, oh, this is something I would like to invite my friends to. Oftentimes, one of the mistakes we make as youth workers is we think, we tell, trust me, it's going to be good, and by your friends. But they're like, uh, I don't trust that guy because the last event was smelly and horrible. And so it's like, what we can do is do a demonstration, check out the videos. These are on YouTube. These are already available. So want to send them a link to your students. Guys, this is what we're going to be showing. All the conversation we really, really, um, and for some students, this is going to be like, this is what I've been waiting for to invite my friends to. So, so you know, so it is that. And I do know this, if it's, if it's all Christians at your group, if it's all Christians at your table, uh, it's going to feel different. It's going to feel different than it was intended to feel. That it's going to be okay. It could still be all right. But the goal was that there would be a balance. There would be people who are on church and church. And um, the cool thing about Alpha is that for some churches, they run it season after season after season. And so sometimes it's just, you know, people get used to it and then invite their friends. And what happens is as you run it, as you keep doing it, that balance begins to grow and change. And so the church, so the church that I'm part of has about a 50-50 split going on. And that's a really cool. It's people inviting and that sort of thing. Yeah. I've got time for one more question. Yeah. Um, I know that sometimes when people come into new groups, they like the group has already progressed a lot mm -hmm. through the course. Is each episode sort of like brand new, new ideas? So somebody won't come in feeling like they're started way later into the course and that they're a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. I think that it's uh, both. I think there is a progression of thought. Like we do, we do start from ground zero. Um, but you know, after the talk on the Bible, where we say, you know, this is what Old Testament, we're not going to reteach it every time we talk about reference those things. But we do believe that it's presented in such a way that people could come on episode ten and still engage and still be positive. So I'm optimistic about that. I think that anyone would be welcome at any point in time. And we toy with the idea. Every group will do it differently. But do we convince people to commit to it? But let's be realistic about the average fourteen-year-old kid. Do they want to sign up for a ten-week anything? No way. No way. And so it's like. You know what I think is awesome? Because the conversation is always going to be open and safe. It's always going to be open and safe. Um, that somebody can come in at any point in time. Now, I do encourage you, invite strong at the beginning. Invite strong beforehand and early on those first weeks. Because then they'll get the most out of it. And as youth leaders, work to have the consistent table groups. I think that that will pay dividends. You know, I don't think you necessarily... Uh, ben would be here beside me. And he'd be saying, and again, we, we're not the master. Ben would be saying, make sure they're in the same group every single time. And he would be saying, hey, if they're over a certain age, they should be co-ed. If they're under, or not. And I just don't, I, he's actually been a youth pastor longer than me and run this more times. So he might say, in our context, that's why. But in your context, I don't know what's best to say, hey, uh, we should have uh, people commit to groups and come every single week. Or, you know, you, I don't know the students you're working with. I don't know their age. I don't know how church, you know. So you'll, you'll figure that out. But I do think at any point in time, if somebody's a guest walked in, hopefully the group has been demonstrating such good discussion that a new person would be welcomed away. They would feel so welcome because... Everyone at the table has learned how to be part of that conversation. It's just, it's just something that picks up, which is awesome. Well, that's all for today. It is such an honor to be with you guys. I just believe in what you guys are doing so much. 
And uh, it was really a pleasure to, to speak with you guys. If you guys have any other questions for me, just look me up on Facebook, Jason Ballard, and uh, throw me a question. And if it's something like, hey, can you send me a, a PSD file for such and such, I'll probably point you to Cayenne, who does that kind of stuff at her office. But if it's something else that I can answer, because I couldn't help you with that, uh, then I, I would totally love to help you and, and be part of this with you guys. I'm excited to hear the stories. If you guys have something awesome happen, you would just make my life if you send me a story. And if there's something you want me to be praying for you for, and you say, hey, there's this thing, just send it to me. But if you ask me to pray for you, I need to know how it goes, because otherwise, like, I'm just like, I have no idea. I'd love to know how it turns out. So anyways, love you guys. Uh, I'm going to hand over the mic to my main man. Let's give him a round of applause.